Hey everyone, Adam and Andrew here with It Takes Two Takes. We're going to talk about episode seven for season two of Warrior. I don't think Cinemax is going to do a copyright strike on us for this one, Adam. So this is what you're left with, everyone. We can't review Mandalorian, apparently. We'll, more on that on another video, but here we are to talk about the beloved Warrior, which, by the way, I want to quickly mention the fact that we receive we have a twitter page let's just go ahead and flash that up if possible adam you're editing this it's on you now we have a twitter uh handle and we got a like from none other than bill o'hara i like adam that is a heart on twitter uh none other than kieran Bu, my boo thanks for giving us some attention my man in fact this whole Review is going to be dedicated to Bill O'Hara. I've already decided just for that gesture. That's what, no, we're not going to do that. There's a lot to talk about for this episode. <laughs> there, There is. Um, so we left off uh, last week with the idea of, um, you know, they've got some explaining to do. You know, they showed back up after the whole tournament and uh, they get sandbagged by Father June, right? And that's exactly where we picked up with this episode. And... Father June is not happy. Uh, he's not thrilled with everything going on and decides that young June is, uh, he's out of the tongue, right? And even burns him out. And it was going to get messier than that until uh, Assam decided to kind of talk to the troops. I, I would put that mildly. It was a little, I, I, it was a, pretty quick transition it was a little bit his assam's argument was basically come on guys right like it's up come on and, and then i was like uh, mm, yeah we'll put the axes away you're right my man i don't think any of them were looking forward to trying to fight assam or hong to begin with let alone young june that would have been a bloody fight that would have been a lot of casualties i think um and I, it didn't I, get to that not only that but father june didn't end up being a uh you know a victim of this and if, if yeah, from, so, from a literal sense. So we have a rebellion. Uh, young June is now taking the seat of head of the Tong. Uh, Sam sitting right behind him, right? Uh, sitting right beside him. And then, you know, there's interesting part later on when young June is talking to father June and, you know, we're hearing, it, you know, kind of multiple times that young June's not in charge. It's really a Sam. And we see a brief moment later on where a Sam and, and young June are talking and even Assam is starting to think maybe this is all on Assam, right? Um, so it, I think that's kind of a little foreshadowing to maybe some events coming up and even I, to the point of, cause I want to stay on this thread, even to the point later on where, you know, you've got uh Chow talking to Assam and, Chow's pretty much saying the same thing. Uh, Assam's in charge. I want to, I want to, yeah, I want to talk about this. I know I left a whole lot to unpack there. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the way I see it is look, hopefully, you know, if you're, you're watching this review. You saw what they did to my man, Father June. But the reality is this foreshadowing, yes. I, I would argue that we were almost beaten over the head with the idea of that, of the, the idea that Assam really is the reason that things are in motion, that things are the way they were. So much so that before they even had these discussions, before Father June was telling young June, hey, uh, you know, I, this is all on your man here. He's the problem. You do realize that, right? This isn't, this isn't you. It's, it, there's a lot to unpack there because he doesn't, he, there's a respect, there's a father-son dynamic. But I thought it was interesting because when the, the whole, when young June sat in that chair, before I knew what was going to happen from that point on, I sat there and I go, to me as the viewer, does this feel deserved? Because so he found a hustle, an effective hustle. All of a sudden he gets to run this tong. I, I felt something didn't feel right. And I think they sort of through character development made it clear that it's not so much that this action of Father June out with the old in with the new, that's not the problem. The real thing is the fact that who is the one to take this chair and I think there's a little bit of a, you know, who are we following here and who deserves this? And we're sealing that, we're seeing that boil up. I wouldn't be surprised if young June and Assam, there's going to be some, uh, some conflict between the two of them. I think you're going to continue to get people whispering in young June's ear um, and about what Assam's doing. And I think that's going to start causing tension between Assam and young June. Like, yeah, 
Assam ultimately, I think his end goal, and he said it before, I think his end goal is he sees himself in that chair. He, I think, thinks it's longer than I think what we're going to see end up happening. Uh, so that was a, a very interesting way to start the episode, right? Um, but a lot happened. Just a lot happened. Jump in into the episode. lesbian love, Adam. I know where you're going. Nelly and a toy. Um, yeah. There, uh, you get a little bit of a toy backstory too, right? So a we toy, did. a toy tells us about her, how she came to America, and um, you know she was married before, loved her husband, and it was his death. Um, that put her on this path more or less. And it's interesting. And then we start to see them bonding a little bit more because Nellie is like, Hey, I know you got this silent partner. Um, I can be that for you instead. Mm -hmm. If you're having some trust, trust issues. And then Nellie telling a toy, well, there's some other girls I'd like to save. And the toys is like, okay, here's the map. Where? Where, 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 tell me where, right? Yeah. A, a toy is clearly willing to do whatever it takes. She's willing to hand over uh, her trust, both, uh, you know, fiscally and as uh, a partner romantically. Uh, okay. I, I, I understand why, but I am sitting where I'm sitting and going, it's a little, it's a little like you want to move in together first or something, or you know, you're kind of jumping into a pretty big commitment here, but it's very clear that Patterson, her her real estate partner, is really not the right guy for the job either. So, yeah, I don't we, know that she we, could be that much worse off. We didn't really know that as much before. We find that out a lot in this episode. We find out right. that he's been taking the property and investments and reinvesting, and he's Collateral. leveraged he's leveraged mm -hmm. himself pretty badly, right? So the news that he she wants to switch partners uh, does not go over well with him, and. You know, but a toy and lie end up going to uh, free some girls. That ends up yeah, this uh, that, this that ends brothel. up being our, that ends up being our action for this episode, right? Um, it really was. That was about all we got for the most part, aside from you know some some brawling with Leary and whatnot. But yeah, that brothel scene was that was intense. So uh, that was a great fight. But we see now lie is getting much more intense in these uh, these fights, and a toy sees it too. And so when she drops off the girls, she tries to leave Lai there as well. And Lai doesn't take it very well. But I think I think that might end up being a good thing. Because I, I, I wonder if at some point that place is going to get compromised. And it's going to be a good thing that someone who's a skilled fighter is there. Um, yeah, there's. I agree with that. I, I think there's a number of ways you can look at it too. Where they might be... For at the time, you know, they may have been temporarily writing off a character, which we only have so so much time, guys. But that may have been a thought, and I think for now it does more of a service to a toy's character development to make that decision than it does with Lie. Lie, well, we yeah. simply don't have enough time to dig into her any longer. At least for now, hopefully we will in the future. We'll see, Cinemax. But, but the other thing, and I watched the inside the episode. Uh, hmm. on YouTube for this. And one of the things that the actress... Who My plays little a... scholar over there, look at you. <laughs> one of the things the actress who plays a toy is brought up is the fact that, you know, based on this time, uh, if, you know, she can... A toy can bond with Nelly a whole lot better than she can with any man because of the fact that in this time frame, any man who comes along can take a toy's power, right? So if she was to hook up with some other guy, in this time frame... Women don't have power. They have no they have no voting rights. They have no power. So if a toy was to get involved with Chow or Assam or somebody else, she loses all her her power more or less. So getting involved with another woman, and Nellie kind of brought that up in a previous episode at the dinner table, right? She's not gonna just go back to being a uh, a dutiful wife. So they're both in a similar situation where, depending on each other two women makes a whole lot more sense than than one of them depending on a man again because it puts them it makes them very vulnerable yeah and the loose thread i guess with that logic would simply be that patterson was a very indeed very deep with her uh in terms of business and that was one sort of 
you know, a, a last measure of just ridding herself of that. That would make sense. I, I understand that then. Uh, yeah, I should watch these these little uh, behind the episode <laughs> things. What's going, well, why are we talking about this? Let's go watch that now. No. Um, so, it, yeah, it, it does make an And Nellie's character is based not the real person isn't named Nellie, but there really was back in that time frame, uh, mm-hmm. a woman who did, uh, you know, settle uh, a lot in uh, Sonoma with a bunch of former prostitutes. So there there really is, you know, some history to that Nelly character uh, that they're building off of when they when you look back in history. But I don't yeah. want to dwell on this this too much because there's still so much more that happened in this episode, right? Mm. Uh, you know, Leary and Sophie kind of getting back together again. Mm. Uh, they kind of been apart a little bit after the the foundry explosion. Yep. And we see them rekindle. Leary's got multiple people telling him pretty much to get into politics because he controls the Irish and those are Irish votes and everyone's going to care about the Irish votes. You know, so they're setting the Depre- Leary up for a more meaningful right. purpose beyond him just being this brute that is out terrorizing right. Sophie uh, the says opposition. It. Sophie says it. The deputy mayor says it. We're hearing this from multiple sides that, hey, you, right. could, you could definitely have a bigger role in this, right? And Leary hears this first from the deputy mayor when... O'Hare is getting pretty much lauded as, hey, look at this great guy who who saved us right after Zing's trial, which the look on Zing's face, I don't think he's going quietly to to his uh, sentence. So I'm interested to see what happens with Zing, but he's ultimately the evidence overwhelming, planted evidence, but planted ev- evidence is overwhelming. He gets charged with murder uh, to and sentenced to death. I still don't think that's going to happen. I think there'll be some sort of jailbreak no. or something. And, um, well, and we we got a little bit of a a hint at that that there may be some issues in the sense that, of course, we had the brothel uh, being attacked by what the police would describe as uh, you know a a, you know, a a an attack with swords, and we have another swordsman. What's going on? So there's a lot but, of moving but there, parts that. But now we've got him covering that up, right? We got Zing right. who is a thorn. We got that covering up, and then we've got, you know we've got all these little things that are starting to, to make his story come undone. Right. Yeah. Um, and that, that's going to play interesting because he's feeling really cocky and, and very kind of proud of himself and thinks everything is now smoothed over and going great. And I think over the next episode or two, things are going to start tumbling down for him. Right. Yeah. Two things with O'Hara, I think, in this episode, and once again, we all, as we all know, this, this uh, review is dedicated to uh, Kieran Bue. Pausing for dramatic effect. Now, O'Hara, two things. One, um, Zeng was eyeing him throughout that walk out of the courtroom. I was pretty confident that if we were to have a death in this episode, not getting ahead of ourselves, don't worry, that O'Hara was going to be the one to go. That's how in deep I thought he was and may still be. But and he's still with us. And Lee, uh, Lee finding out that O'Hara was just talking to one of the victim's widows you know, the week before, I think yep. it's starting to make Lee more suspicious about where that watch came from. The walls are closing in around O'Hara, but it's not his first rodeo in that regard. But the thing that's different this time that I find interesting from a character development and plot standpoint is the fact that O'Hara knows how to uh, live on borrowed time. We've mentioned it before when we reviewed these episodes of O'Hara and his gambling addiction and the way that he owes different people and you know, he gets involved with these tongs and Zing in, in this case. And the Leary, difference now Leary, is Leary, this... Leary even calls him out in the courtroom about his closeness to uh, Zing's tong, right? And he has to make up right. an excuse, like I was getting close so I can nail him, right? It, it's O'Hara's mantra. He just he just kind of slithers through things. As much as we love him, and as much as we love Kieran Bue, I'm going to keep saying that name throughout this review. Uh, it is the fact. It, I would say that the the difference this time that I find interesting is now, he, as much as he's tried to get himself out of compromising himself and doing things for money and you know accepting bribes he may be doing it within his own department now he may be doing it with his in his own profession and within the police force I, I the shift is interesting the fact that now oh i don't know i just walk away and say i didn't see anything and you know what's that going to cost me that right. sort of so it's interesting but then we get to more of uh the, the end of the episode where you know, uh, the mayor's finding out that his his wife's business where he thought was kaput 
is not actually kaput. He's being laughed at in a bar by some of the other influential men, which makes him drink more, makes him angry. And we also hear the influential men saying, look, I, you can say whatever you want outside, but we need the Chinese workers, right? We need them, you know? And so he's got pressures from all sides. He's you know, obviously heavily inebriated. Um, but so that sets up one part of that, the final scene. The other part is Sophie and Leary get seen by Penny. Penny yeah. knows that it was Leary that destroyed the, the factory. And right. I think at this point, she's got a damn good idea that Sophie has probably helped him do it. And so they have a confrontation in the house where she tells Sophie, you can get your things and get out of my house. Sophie digs back going, you mean his house? Before she walks off. Right. And that's when the mayor comes home inebriated and, and mad. And things get a bit physical. Things get physical. And I, I'll give credit to uh, the actor uh, of the mayor. He, he has kind of over time become much more enjoyable as a sort of internal villain within this show as a scumbag as much as he looks like a mayor if someone put a very like it's like what a kid thinks a mayor looks like that they put a snapchat filter over he's just almost cartoonish in my opinion just the way he's <laughs> the way he looks but anyway the uh the battle yeah the the showdown i you could call it, 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 it i don't know what else to call it it's 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 a brutal you uh, know conflict Pe you know penny had to have felt good punching him right i mean after all the the crap she has endured from him over season one and season two that there had to have been a certain amount of joy decking him right yeah. uh but he's not going to take that well she tries to tell him just look divorce me it solves both of our problems right um but he won't let it go and things continue to escalate and get physical uh sophie gets involved and gets tossed um and ultimately, he's got his hands around Penny's neck. She's losing consciousness when he gets whacked upside the head. Yep. Uh, good old Jacob comes to the rescue and offs the mayor. Because he's he. There was a chunk of the skull on that on that on the the murder weapon, and there was a pool of blood forming underneath the the body. I'm going to guess the mayor's dead. Just yep. going to throw that out there. Yep. The, 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 the Chinaman with the crowbar in the foyer. We know who did it. And the, uh, who's, who, who's, who's surviving this one. That's what I want to know. Is Penny alive? I, we, I, 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 think I, I, I think Penny is alive. We saw her losing consciousness, but I don't think she was dead. I think Sophie's alive. Sophie's alive. I think and mayor uh, Blake, I assume is, Right. Dead. Now that will end up if he's dead, like I'm suspecting, that will make next episode really interesting because that means the deputy mayor now becomes mayor. So the guy who is pulling all the puppet strings in the background, yeah, yeah, is now and now in charge. That's gonna take a lot of time away from him from washing random women's hair. That's gonna be a big burden on him. But we find out there's a secret. My Ling finds out some sort of secret. She's got a photograph. We don't get to see the photograph, but we know we there's don't. something damning about that photograph. Yeah. Um, and because the woman, he was married previously and the, his former wife, um, or at least had a, the, the woman who had the photo didn't want to give it up very easily. So my Ling has now got some dirt. But then also we had my... Speaking of choking out, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say, we kind of, I, I, I almost completely forgot about the fact that my Ling does a trust exercise with Leong, right? Because was it a trust exercise? Or is this Leong's I, thing? I I think no. I think it was a trust exercise because she calls mm. it out as a trust exercise. You either trust me or you don't. And he takes his hand off of her arm, and trusts that she's not going to kill him. Mm. Um. So, I think it's a trust exercise. Ultimately, um, I don't think I don't think based on our interactions we've seen them up to date that this was something that he was into. You can tell his reaction to it even initially was not something that was like, oh, let's do this. She had to talk him into it on the idea this is a trust exercise because he's been, you know, maneuvering behind her back. And she's got to see if he actually trusts her or not. And it'll be interesting to see what their dynamic is in future episodes. 
Interesting. If if the one thing that uh, solidifies their trust with one another was the one thing that kind of did David Carradine in, speaking of relationships to Bruce Lee and Kung Fu. Just saying. I'm just saying. Facts are facts. I mean, I'm just connecting things. Right. We can all talk about degrees of Kevin Bacon. I can't talk about degrees of choking people out for sexual pleasure. Why can't we do that, Adam? It's YouTube. Nobody cares. Disney's not going to copyright strike this. It's out there. And we only get like a dozen people that looks at these videos anyway. So who's who's really going to care? Um, yeah, right. I I... I I think this episode, there was a lot to unpack. Um, and I think that's every episode this season. And what I find so interesting about Warrior is it seems like it's a word of mouth thing, right? My buddy Ron, um, he's the one who told me about the show. And that's what I why I initially downloaded it. You know, we I all know Ron. Everyone watching knows Ron, Adam. Come on. Um, you know, and then I told other people, the other people I know who watch it are because I told them and they probably, and I, th they've told other people. So I feel like this show is very much a word of mouth type of show. Yeah. And once you get hooked on it though, you're hooked. And I've, I've been enjoying this season. Um, unfortunately we've only got three more episodes left of this season. So right. it'll be interesting to see where things go from here, but I'm, I, I enjoyed it. My, our, our supply of. Kieran Bue is, is diminishing rapidly, as as I would probably put it myself. Um, so final thoughts. Great episode. A little, I mean, we had some action as far as the brothel fight. And then we had at the very end with a domestic uh, disturbance. Um, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. I think uh, what happens in the next few uh, episodes will be very interesting. I think if... Jacob didn't kill the mayor. Leary would once he found out he tossed Sophie, right? Because Leary is yeah. way into Sophie. So he'll this... finish him off if he's not gone, which I assume he is. Yeah. If not, he's a vegetable. I, I suspect Leary would not take news of Sophie being tossed very well. Um, so that was our review. Um, tell us what you think. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts on the episode. And uh, we'll do this again next week. And until then, uh, this is It Takes Two Takes. Hey everyone, Andrew with It Takes Two Takes. We're playing some royalty-free music, so don't even bother shazamming that one. We got videos over here I think you're gonna enjoy, and there's a button over here I'm gonna enjoy. Let's make this all work together, right? Please subscribe, check out what else we have going on. Thanks for watching.